Welcome to Spiritual Calisthenics. Christ is in our midst today on Wednesday, September 13th. We commemorate the consecration of the Church of the Holy Resurrection, that is the Holy Sepulchre, in Jerusalem. The fourth feast of the elevation of the Holy Cross. St. Cornelius the Centurion Martyr. St. Aristides the Philosopher. St. Herothius the Righteous of Iveron Monastery on Mount Athos. The fourth feast of the elevation of the Holy Cross. We offer you in mediation the life-giving cross, which of thy goodness thou hast given unto us, the unworthy, O Lord. Save thy hierarchs and thy flock, and grant thou peace to the Theotokos, O only friend of man. Regarding the consecration of the Church of the Holy Resurrection, that is, the Holy Sepulchre, the Church that is honored far above all others is that of the Holy Resurrection, which St. Constantine the Great constructed at the place of Golgotha, where our Savior was crucified and buried. For a long time, this place had been purposely buried beneath the earth by the Jews and heathen. Furthermore, during the reign of Hadrian, a temple dedicated to Aphrodite was built over the site so that this sacred place might be even further desecrated and fall into utter oblivion. It was here that the cross was hidden. However, at the command of the pious Emperor Constantine, excavations were made and the tokens of the saving passion were found, which we'll go into more detail later. It was here then that the very great and magnificent temple named in honor of Christ God's resurrection, the Anastasis, was built under the supervision of the Blessed Helen and Constantine's mother, while Drasilian was Eparch of Palestine and Makarius was Archbishop of Jerusalem, who was the latter also who exalted the Venerable Cross and performed the consecration of this temple in the year 336. Thou hast shown the earthly beauty of the holy tabernacle of thy glory to be like unto the splendor of the heavenly firmament, O Lord. Strengthen it forever and ever, and accept our prayers, which we unceasingly offer therein unto thee, through the Theotokos, O thou who art the life and resurrection of all. The church is shown to be a many-lighted heaven that doth shine a guiding light upon all them that do believe, wherein, while standing, we cry aloud, Do thou thyself now establish this house, O Lord. Regarding the higher martyr Cornelius the Centurion, soon after the sufferings of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross and his ascension into heaven, a centurion by the name of Cornelius settled at Caesarea in Palestine. He had lived previously in the Thracian Italy. Although he was a pagan, he distinguished himself by deep piety and good deeds. The holy evangelist Luke says in his books Acts of the Apostles, the Lord did not disdain his virtuous life and so led him to the knowledge of truth and to faith in Christ. Once. Cornelius was praying in his home. An angel of God appeared to him and said that his prayer had been heard and accepted by God. The angel commanded him to send people. The angel commanded him to send people to Joppa to find Simon, also called Peter. Cornelius immediately fulfilled the command. While those people were on their way to Joppa, the apostle Peter was at prayer, and he had a vision. Three times a great sheet was lowered down to him, filled with all kinds of beasts and fowl. He heard a voice from heaven commanding him to eat everything. When the apostle refused to eat food, which Jewish law regarded as unclean, the voice said, What God hath cleansed, you must not call common. Through this vision, the Lord commanded the apostle Peter to preach the word of God to the pagans. When the apostle Peter arrived at the house of Cornelius, in the company of those who sent to meet him, he was received with great joy and respect by the host together with his kinsmen and comrades. Cornelius fell down at the feet of the apostle and requested to be taught the way of salvation. St. Peter talked about the earthly life of Jesus Christ and spoke of the miracles and signs worked by the Savior and of his teachings about the kingdom of heaven. Then St. Peter told him of the Lord's death on the cross, his resurrection and ascension into heaven. By the grace of the Holy Spirit, Cornelius believed in Christ and was baptized with all his family. He was the first pagan to receive baptism. He retired from the world and went preaching the gospel together with the Apostle Peter, who made him a bishop. When the Apostle Peter, together with his helper, Saints Timothy and Cornelius, was in the city of Ephesus, he learned of a particularly vigorous idol worship in the city of Skepsis. Lots were drawn to see who would go there, and Cornelius was chosen. In the city lived a prince by the name of Demetrius, learned in the ancient Greek philosophy, hating Christianity and venerating the pagan gods, in particular Apollo and Zeus. Learning about the arrival of St. Cornelius in the city, he immediately summoned him and asked him the reason for his coming. St. Cornelius answered that he came to free him from the darkness of ignorance 
and lead him to the knowledge of the true light. The prince, not comprehending the meaning of what was said, became angry and demanded he answer each of his questions. St. Cornelius explained that he served the Lord, and that the reasons for his coming was to announce the truth. The prince became enraged and demanded that Cornelius offer sacrifice to the idols. The saint asked to be shown the gods. When he entered the pagan temple, Cornelius turned towards the east and uttered a prayer to the Lord. There was an earthquake, and the temple of Zeus and the idols situated in what they were were destroyed. All the populace, seeing what had happened, were terrified. The prince was even more vexed and began to take counsel together with those approaching him about how to destroy Cornelius. They bound the saint and took him to prison for the night. At this point, one of his servants informed the prince that his wife and child had perished beneath the rubble of the destroyed temple. After a certain while, one of the pagan priests by the name of Barbetis reported that he heard the voice of the wife and the son somewhere in the ruins, and that they were praising the God of the Christians. The pagan priest asked that the imprisoned one be released. In gratitude for the miracle worked by St. Cornelius, and the wife and son and the prince of the prince remained alive. The joyful prince hastened to the prison in the company of those about him, declaring that he believed in Christ, and asking him to bring his wife and his son out of the ruins of the temple. St. Cornelius went to the, temple, the destroyed temple, and through prayer and suffering were freed. After this, Prince Demetrius and all his relatives and comrades accepted holy baptism. St. Cornelius lived for a long time in the city, converted all the pagan inhabitants to Christ, and made Evnonimus presbyter in the service of the Lord. St. Cornelius died in old age, and was buried not far from the pagan temple he destroyed. St. Evnonimus, as well as St. Demetrius and his family, we celebrated only a little while ago. The church has received thee as the holy first fruits of the nations, for thou dost illumine her with thy great deeds of godly virtue, hallowed and sacred initiate, most godly Cornelius. The readings are according to the Feast of the Consecration, from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Holy brethren, who share in a heavenly call, consider Jesus, the apostle, being someone that is sent, and high priest of our confession. He was faithful to him who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. Yet Jesus has been counted worthy of as much more glory than Moses, as the builder of a house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Meaning the temple, the church, is not just the temple that we are celebrating today, the church of the Holy Resurrection, but all of the church, us, are built by God. God is that master builder. He is the foundation upon which all other things rest. The Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do men say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? And this is a call for all of us. Who do we say Christ is? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Peter, Petro, means rock. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So Peter is being seen as the foundation of the church because he is the leader of the disciples. The disciples are going to spread Christianity to all the world. And so this is the bedrock. And we are going to see this as well in the saint that we celebrate today, St. Cornelius. I hope that you've enjoyed today's spiritual calisthenics. Have a blessed and wonderful day.